Hey everyone! Okay, so before I jump into what I want to talk about in today's video, I just wanted to give a quick update about a sad decision that Andrew and I had to make at the start of this week, and that is that we aren't going to be bringing Fisker home with us. She's not going to be coming to us. Really upset about it, but I do know it was the right decision to make, not only for us, but also for her. And basically, in a very, very much summarised, the leg that she broke is not looking great in terms of the healing. And I think she is going to be fine. And yeah, she's going to be fine. But I've had a good friend of mine who's a vet give sort of her second opinion, ask lots of colleagues and then other people that we know who are vets. And the general consensus is that it's very high chance that the leg is going to cause problems longer term with like a high risk of refracture. And because we couldn't insure the leg, or even like most lots of insurance companies were like, we won't insure any of her legs. Basically, it would mean that if she did ever refracture, it would be orthopedic surgery. And I just don't want to be in a situation where we have a dog with the lives that we live and we really want a dog to come in and enjoy us and we live in the Peak District and it's very much countryside and lots of sort of rocky edges and places where dogs are just going to jump off stuff and I think, oh, it would just be horrific if we had her and then she had an accident with us and then we were in a situation where the surgery was going to be thousands and thousands and thousands and it's not insured and can we have, oh, it's just a horrible, horrible thought to be in that situation and to know that, you know, realistically the alternative would be to keep her on the lead all the time to stop her from jumping off stuff and it's just not it's just not fair on her and it's just not fair on us and so we've made that decision uh, and Johanna who's the breeder and my friend is completely understanding and so we're both really upset about it but we know that it's the best decision for her and for us um, and yeah that's it basically that's my summary so yeah I don't even really know what to say. It's just a bit rubbish. But these things happen and yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna get on to what I wanted to talk about in this video and I'll put a timestamp at the bottom because I've just spoken for two minutes and I imagine lots of you are not that interested. But um, I wanted to update anyone who was thinking, hey Emily, I thought you were getting a puppy and, and where is she? Um, so yes, that is that. Now, what I wanted to speak to you about was beliefs. And beliefs are really, really important when it comes to recovery. They're important in every element of life, but they're very relevant in recovery. And they're relevant in terms of our fears. Now, when we are embarking on recovery, it's about taking opposite rebellious action against the eating disorder mindset, which involves rebelling against the disordered behaviours, rebelling against fear foods, rebelling against all that kind of stuff. And when it comes to those fears and what those fears might be, we have to look at, you know, so for example, the fear of weight gain. We have to look at, one, when it comes to tackling them, one, what are our actions telling our brain? You know, what on a day-to-day -day basis are we telling our brain about that fear through our actions? So are you engaging in behaviours, taking actions, that tell your brain that weight gain is bad. Are you not honouring your hunger? Are you monitoring and controlling the portions that you are allowed to have? Are you choosing low calorie options? Are you opting for the low fat or the diet version of things? Are you weighing yourself or engaging in body checking? Are you holding on to old clothes? Are you engaging in compulsive movement. All of these are just a few examples of actions that you might be engaging in that are sending a message to your brain that weight gain is bad. So that's the first thing. It's what actions are you taking? Because at the end of the day, if you want to stop fearing weight gain and to embrace your unsuppressed body, which is a crucial part of recovery, how can you expect your brain to let go of that fear 
if actually every single day you're engaging in actions and activities and behaviours over and over again that send a message that that fear is relevant, you're not. That's, that's, the, that's the long and short of it. It's not going to happen. And as well as looking at your actions, the other thing you have to do when it comes to tackling fears in recovery is look at the beliefs which support that fear. Now, beliefs are things that can sometimes feel immovable. They feel factual. They feel solid and firm and that that's just who you are. But what I want to tell you is that beliefs are malleable. Every single belief that you have is something that you have learnt You've either learnt it through something you've experienced and through the experiences you've had, or you have learnt it by taking what someone else has said to be true. That's how you've gained the beliefs that you have. And so the thing here is because you have learnt the beliefs, you can also unlearn them. You can change that learning. You can learn new beliefs. So the first thing you need to do is you need to identify the belief that is supporting that fear identify it, flag it up, what is it? And the next thing you need to do is take responsibility of your role in changing that. If that belief is no longer serving you, no longer supporting the person that you want to be, the life that you want to live, then it is your responsibility to change it, to take action, to get proactive and to change it. One of the things you can do first off is to look at that belief and get curious, explore it, delve into it. Why is it there? Like I said earlier, beliefs are things which you have learnt and you have learnt that either by being told that something is the way it is and believing that and taking it as true or you've learnt it through experiences or exposures. And so delve into it. What is the foundations of that belief? Where has it come from? Why is it there? If it's come from being passed down from a family member, why might they have had that? Why might they have passed that on? And explore the various different aspects of the belief, both from your perspective, from maybe the person who shared it with you or one of the people who is involved in the development of that belief you hold, Get really curious about exploring that belief from a very three-dimensional perspective. And with all of that knowledge about the belief, what it is, where it's come from, it's then about going back to your responsibility and the fact that actually it's malleable and you can change it. And if that belief is no longer serving you, if that belief is not conducive to you moving forwards in your recovery, then it's a case of getting really proactive about shifting it, about changing it. And there are four key things that I want to share with you that helped me do this both in my recovery and actually coming out of recovery because this is something that works with beliefs that are related to recovery and also beliefs that are related to everything else, all the beliefs that you have. So actually the first one of these ties very strongly in with what I was previously talking about, about the action taking. And that is that you have to get proactive in changing your beliefs through the actions you take. So for example, you need to be taking actions on a day-to-day -day basis which send a message to your brain that counters that limiting belief, that belief that weight gain is bad, and instead empowers and supports the belief that you can trust your body and that your unsuppressed body weight is absolutely okay. That is where action taking is key, again, in shifting beliefs. The second thing is about getting really proactive in your self-conversation. So what I mean by that is it's developing an ability to jump in and ground yourself when your brain is starting to go down that old spiralling pattern of thoughts that are associated with that fear and that self-limiting belief. So it's having some tools, some self-conversation tools that you can jump in with. For example, a couple of mine were the simple sentence of, I trust my body. I trust my body. And I would literally, even if my brain was going down that spiraling thing, I would say to myself, I trust my body. And I would repeat that. Three is a, three is a very satisfying number to me, but I would repeat it to myself. And there was a lot of times where it felt like fake it till you make it. 
you know, where it felt like I was thinking, oh, this is not, this is not helping. My brain is just being like, ah, and I'm thinking, I'm just saying, I trust my body. I trust my body, I thought. And my brain was literally going, but you don't, but you don't. I was thinking, I trust my body. And you know what? By forcing myself to get proactive in changing that self-conversation, I noticed with time and commitment and consistency, shifts in my self-conversation, shifts in my ability to start believing what I was saying to myself. Another one that I found really helpful actually with coming out of recovery and embracing kind of the, the growth that comes when you are leaving behind something which has dominated your entire world for God knows how many years and you're then kind of spat out into this life that you're living. One that's really helped me, a very grounding kind of self-conversation tool, is something called the four I am's. And my four I am's are, I am bold, I am brave, I am wild, I am learning. Now, these are completely unique to you and you have to find what fits you. This is what fits me. And it's such a powerful tool that I use often, actually, if I'm just having a day where I'm feeling like, what am I doing with my life? I don't really know. I'm not really sure. Is this the right thing? Like, you know, we have those days. And I do also think, and I want to talk about this more, that when you have been in the eating disorder world, like in that kind of brain that is absorbed in eating disorder for however many years, and you come out of it, and your world is no longer about eating disorder, and it's no longer about recovery, and you're just recovered, and it's done. It's a bit like, oh gosh, and I literally felt like I was kind of spat out into my life. And I felt very connected to who I was, I felt a very strong sense of me. But I almost felt a bit like, oh gosh, I'm not sure this life I'm living is 100% the life I want to be living. Like, I think I might need to make changes and I'm not really sure where to start or what needs to happen. And there was anxiety and worry and, and doubt associated with that. And this is a tool and a technique that I found and I have used it so much and it is so, so good. The four I am's, work out what yours are. As I say, mine, I am bold, I am brave, I am wild. I am learning. And again, it won't mean anything to anyone else, but it's it it means something to me. And sometimes I say it fast to myself, I'm bold, I'm brave, I'm wild, I'm learning. And I might repeat it a few times. Sometimes I look at myself in the mirror and I say to myself, I am bold, I am brave, I am wild, and I'm learning. And I, I literally make eye contact with myself in the mirror and I say it to myself. And it's, a, it's just a really powerful tool. So I really recommend that one as well. Mm -hmm. And the third one, surround yourself with people who share the belief that you want to have, the beliefs that you want to have. Surround yourself with those people. Distance yourself wherever and however possible from the people that support those limiting beliefs that are holding you back from your growth and your life that you want to live. Distance yourself from them. Surround yourself with people who are, in this context, for example, recovery, embracing their unsuppressed bodies, embracing weight gain, open to it, trusting their bodies to do what they need to do to take them where they need to go. And the fourth thing is to ask for support and talk about it. Share with a close friend, a family member, your partner, this growth, this journey that you're on. Talk to them about building this new belief, about dismantling the old beliefs, talk it through. You know, often when you go through this process, there may well be emotions that come to the surface and it's important you feel them. If anger comes, you know, if you look into a belief that's been holding you back for a long time and you find some source of it that brings anger, talk to people. Whether that is a professional in some, you know, in coaching or therapy, or whether that is a partner, a friend, talk it out, get support from people. So yeah, anyway, that is, in summary, what I wanted to talk to you about today. I hope that you found it interesting. I hope that it's been helpful. If anyone's got any questions, please do comment below. Also, if anyone is interested in me sharing a bit about my journey post-recovery, so my recovered journey, my recovered growth, then let me know because it's not something that I've seen talked about anywhere. And actually, personally, 
it has been a, a journey in itself. And it is a journey in itself. Like, I'm still going through that now. And sometimes I think, oh, I'd love to be sharing this. But then I think I'm not sure if it's that relevant to anyone else or if anyone's actually interested. And obviously, a lot of you watching this are in the recovery process and so benefit more from me sharing about the recovery process rather than where I'm at now. But if anyone is interested, then I'm happy to do some kind of videos on that and yeah, let me know basically. Other than that, I hope you have a great day wherever you are and whatever you're doing and I will speak to you soon.